All right, guys. Hey, welcome back to Matthew's Ballistics. Um, in the previous video, uh, we went and shot at the range. Um, I ended up inviting a couple of my friends with me. They brought their own rifles, and so things were a little bit hectic, uh, and I wasn't able to record and kind of describe what I had going on the way I would normally do things. So, uh, the previous video didn't really do much editing to it, just kind of threw the clips together of me shooting my test rounds, and I've got my book of information here that I've got everything recorded down in, and I will go over that with y'all. So, First things first, before we look at the targets, first things first, we're going to go over some numbers. So I used 140 grain ELDM or ELD match bullets Hornet, made by Hornady. Uh, they are in the 6.5 Creedmoor caliber or a .264 caliber. Um, the powder I used was Alliant Power Pro 4000 MR. I used Hornady cases. Uh, I sorted these out by weight and I got the ones that were within three grains of each other, so between 150 and 153 grains a piece. I used Federal 210 primers. They're not match primers, they're not magnum primers, they're just standard large rifle primers. My testing OAL for the cartridge overall length is 2.760 inches. And if you want to know why I use that testing length, uh, you can check out the previous few videos and I describe there why I come to the conclusion to use that as a testing uh, OAL for this round. So I started at 40. 0 0.0 grains and I worked up to 42.7 grains. This is not the maximum I'm going to. This is just for this series of testing. The trim length on the brass was 1.915 inches and the rifle I am shooting is a Ruger American Predator 22 inch with a 22 inch barrel and 6.5 Creedmoor. Okay so first five rounds at 40.0 grains. Um, I got two errors on the chronograph. They didn't record, but the three that did record, uh, I averaged those together to give me an average velocity of 2,323 feet per second with an extreme spread of 102 feet per second. And my Group size there was a 0.891 inches, and where I measured this from was the distance between the two farthest impacts. I did not measure this as, you know, an absolute measurement. This was just between the two, the center points of the two farthest apart impacts. So Moving on to 40.3 grains, I got an average of 2,340 feet per second, and the extreme spread dropped to 67 feet per second. There were two errors as well in this group, so I averaged the three uh, recordings that I got, and the group size was 1.322 inches. Again, that's from the farthest impacts away from each other. Uh, the next group was 40.6 grains, where I only had one error, so I got four readings, and I averaged them together to be 2,484 feet per second. The extreme spread was 178 feet per second, and the group was 0.932 inches. The next group, at 40.9 grains, I had no errors, so I had five recordings in velocity that I averaged together to get 2,419 feet per second, and the extreme spread was 85 feet per second, 
and the group size is 1.283 inches. This is all being done, all being shot at 100 yards. The next group at 41.2 grains, no errors again, so I used five recordings to average uh, 2,498 feet per second. The extreme spread was 84 feet per second, and the group size is 0 0.602. This was actually the smallest group of the day. Uh, well, for my testing ammunition. I'm not going to get into the factory ammunition too much. I will here in just a little bit to give you a comparison of my ammo to the factory ammo. But, moving on. Uh, the next group at 41.5 grains. I had one error, so I only had four recordings to average together and they averaged at 2,521 feet per second. The extreme spread was 144 feet per second, and the group size was 0.624 inches. So really close to the previous group in group size. All right, and then the next group uh, at 41.8 grains, I had no errors, so I had five uh, recordings to average and they averaged to 2,575 feet per second. The extreme spread was 36 feet per second, but the group size was 1.716 inches. Really good extreme spread, really poor group size. All right, moving on to the next group at 42.1 grains. I had no errors, so got five recordings. Average together is 2,568 feet per second. Extreme spread was 87 feet per second. And the group size is 1.48, or sorry, 1.458 inches. The next set was, there were no errors. Actually, there was one error. My battery died on my chronograph, and I had to replace it. So I got four recordings at 2,607 feet per second average. The extreme spread was 53 feet per second, and the group size is 1.494 inches. And then the last group I shot rounds 46 through 50. No errors on this group. The average was 2,654 feet per second. This is at 42.7 grains. The extreme spread was 35, and the group size was 0 0.910 inches. So I feel like I'm getting closer to where the optimal charge is going to be. The extreme spread over the last three groups dropped from 80 it went from 87 to 53 to 35 so it's a very consistent dropping in extreme spread and the group size was also dropping and the velocity was steadily going up uh, with adding three tenths of a grain of powder it went up about 50 feet per second 50 to 60 feet per second so I think I'm getting close to where my optimal charge is going to be. Uh, and so in my next testing, I'm actually going to do another five shot group at 42.7 as a starting point. And then I'm, and I'm also going to measure velocities and, and check for extreme spread and that sort of thing. And then I might continue on upwards, uh, of course, going up 5.3 grains in powder per group. Uh, so this is some good data and I feel really confident with it. Um, uh, I did have a, a couple of readings that seemed a little bit off for me and I think it had something to do with during the middle of this recording, we started getting into the middle of the day where the sun was really high in the sky and I think it was affecting the way the chronograph was reading and that's something that you have to take into account for. Of course, I didn't use sun shades on my chronograph, so we started out good, and I feel like we finished good. All the readings were really consistent towards the end. Uh, so, in comparison, 
from my ammo doing this using this powder that's not normally used for 6.5 Creedmoor compared to factory Hornady 140 grain ammunition which is the same 140 grain ELD that I'm loading from the factory out of the box we got uh, I shot nine rounds of the 140 that's all that I had left um, we got an average of 2620 feet per second so my rounds are already above that in velocity out of the 22 inch barrel but the extreme spread on the factory Hornady ammunition, this is all rounds out of this exact same box, the same box. The extreme spread is 223 feet per second, which was larger than anything that I shot using my own loads. And in my opinion, really un unacceptable. The lowest velocity was 2,511 feet per second and the highest was 2717 feet per second so actually that's not the highest or the lowest anyways it was 223 feet per second difference in velocity um and the group but the group size was not bad i shot a nine shot group that measured 1.123 inches all nine rounds in that one group so not too bad as far as accuracy goes but the extreme spread and velocity was really high for me and for me personally it was pretty unacceptable now we're going to get into looking at the targets and so you can actually see the differences and how the rounds were hitting on the target all right guys so now we're going to get into looking at the targets and we're going to kind of go over a little bit of the results. Okay. So, oh. I'm going to start at this target. This is the target we were at 40. 0 0.0 grains and I know it's backwards when I'm shooting at the range I'm actually hitting right and not left but looking at this the way I'm filming it looks like this the left side of the target but you notice all the numbers and letters and everything are all uh, reversed so all my targets I'm almost always hitting right on um we were dealing with quite a bit of wind at the range when we were shooting. Uh, we had a pretty steady 5 mile an hour wind and then it was gusting anywhere from 15 to 20 miles an hour at times. And if you watch the previous video, you can hear a lot of the wind noise in it. Uh, of course, the previous video, probably pretty boring to those that you know, just want to see the cool results and cool shooting and all that. Basically, I was just shooting and I didn't really bother to edit the time out in between shots. So you get a really raw experience if that's what you're looking for, if that's what you want to look at. But first group here, and this is a, a 50 yard small bore target. This is what you would use uh, shooting 50 yard competitions with like 22s or like a 17 HMR or something. We're shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor here, so bullet holes are a little larger on this target than they, you know, they appear, they appear to be larger, but it's a small target. Um, so as you can tell, the distance on here from the, you know, the two shots that were furthest away, this one up here and this one down here, was 0.891 inches. Uh, if you take and square the target and square it, and I'm only going to demonstrate this on this one, but it's the same way I measured the rest of them. But if you draw a line right through the center of that lowest shot and right through the center of that one, and they are level and parallel across the target, it measures 0.869 inches. 
and then the width from the two widest shots measures 0.45 inches. So we were seeing more vertical dispersion than we were horizontal dispersion, which is good. I would prefer to have vertical dispersion over horizontal dispersion. Uh, and the horizontal dispersion on some of these targets is much larger than on this one. And we'll get into that. And it probably has somewhat to do with the difference in wind we are having crosswind at the range even though we're only shooting 100 yards it does affect your bullets to a certain extent uh, besides that uh, the horizontal dispersion could have either something to do with barrel harmonics or me pulling the shot off because i'm just a human and i do make mistakes and make errors when firing a gun I'm totally honest with that. I'm not the best shot ever, but I'm getting better, and that's what this is all about. And then uh, it also could do with the wind, or a combination of all three. Wind, barrel harmonics, and me pulling the shot off. So the next group is this guy here. And that was shot at 40.3 grains. It's not that good you know this one was a much better group uh the rounds were closer together there's two holes there's two holes and then one over there you know like they're all touching so 40.3 grams not all that great um, we're gonna move on to the next part of this deal and we're gonna go to 40.6 grains so at 40.6 our vertical dispersion was actually pretty good with four of the rounds landing within like two tenths of each other vertically, but horizontally they were about what would I measure that at horizontally about five tenths, about uh, half an inch. So not terrible. Uh, I actually thought that was a pretty decent group considering the velocities were pretty low there still. Uh, at 40.9 grains, we got a significant vertical and horizontal dispersion. Did not like that group at all. And the velocity, again, still pretty low. So, next target at 41.2 grains we got a actually a really good group this is not i mean it's not a perfect group but it's a good group uh velocity is still pretty low but we're getting a good you know a solid group here uh vertical dispersion is about a little over half an inch or almost uh six tenths of an inch or uh, three-fifths if you will and then horizontal dispersion was basically two or a point two six nine inches which is pretty minimal and that's what i like to see i'd rather see that vertical or the horizontal dispersion be really small like that than the vertical dispersion if you know the horizontal is easy to accommodate the or sorry the vertical is easy to accommodate the, the horizontal dispersion there's a lot of variables that can affect that more than just velocity uh, so anyways moving on to the 41.5 grain group again this group's not terrible so and one thing to note is you can kind of see the difference in the grouping but again we are having a windy day so things are going to be a little bit different this group's not bad uh, 0.264 or point, sorry 0 0.624 uh, the 41.2 is 0 0.602 so those groups are actually really close together I like them a lot not bad grouping all right now we're going on to 41.8 grains and here we got really 
large horizontal dispersion. From this hole to this hole measured 1.716 inches, which at 100 yards for me, that's an unacceptable load right there. There's no way that I would want to use that at all for anything. Uh, the vertical dispersion is not terrible. Uh, it's under an inch. It's 0 0.790, under eight tenths of an inch, actually. Um, next group, at this one, which is 42.1 grains. Another not so great group. Terrible vertical dispersion and terrible horizontal dispersion. Of course, actually, one of these rounds, this is actually a group that I messed up on, and I got six shots on this group and four on a different one. And the reason why was I had these targets plastered in the same areas on two different target stands, and I accidentally, you know, selected the wrong side. I've got my scope dialed up all the way in power, so it's pretty easy to accidentally select the wrong target doing that. Now, that's a good thing to note. Uh, but I re realized that, you know, like, <laughs> immediately after I shot, I was going, oh, crap, got the wrong target. But anyways, vertical dispersion, not good. Horizontal dispersion, not good. Everything was over an inch in every direction. Uh... We're looking at 1.458, 1.194, 1.249. That was maybe the worst group of the day. Altogether, anyways. And then we got over here to 42.4. Uh, horizontal dispersion under three quarters of an inch. Or sorry, vertical dispersion under three quarters of an inch. Horizontal dispersion was 1.3. Uh, three four so not great again on the horizontal dispersion but like I said we had some issues with the wind you know the wind being gusting and and unpredictable so again I wasn't really looking for grouping here this test was mainly focused on velocity and trying to find a good velocity node and trying to get the velocity where I want it to be. But with that being said, we come to the last group at 42.7 grams, which this is my favorite group of the day. The reason why, this little guy down here is a four-shot group, and the only thing that ruined this group was this little guy up here. Not sure what happened, why he ended up being about uh, two-thirds of an inch high, but if it wasn't for him, this four-shot group would have won the day. And it also had the best extreme spread velocity, important to note that, at 35 feet per second. Uh, we got... Uh, from the furthest shot to the furthest shot... Uh, we got a 0 0.910 uh, height if you want to square it up like I mentioned on the first target. Uh, 0 0.881 and then width wise was the best I think at 0 0.330. So that little bit right there, that, that was my favorite load of the day. And I really think that with a, even a little more powder charge... We can expect a little more consistency and velocity and hopefully get that group even a little bit tighter. So I hope you guys stuck with me through this video. I know it's just a bunch of talking uh, and a bunch of reviewing on targets and reviewing on data. But I hope you got something from it. I hope you learned a little bit from it. I'm learning some from it. Of course, this long-range precision shooting and trying to dial in ammunition for me is only something that I'm recently taken up on. I've only been doing it uh, about a year now, uh, really focusing on getting some nice grouping as far as precision goes. Uh, I've always wanted to shoot tight groups, whether it was with a rifle or handgun or anything. 
but I've never really gotten into tailoring my ammunition for a certain rifle or handgun and making it shoot even better groups. And this is, that's one of the things that I've only recently got into, like I said, over the past year, even though I've been reloading for about 10 years. Um, so anyways, I hope you guys stuck with me through this. Uh, if you got some comments or some questions or things you would like to add or see in a next video, uh, I want to invite you guys to leave that in the comment section below. Um, if you want to check out my Facebook page, I usually post there before I do a video and I give you, you know, give a little bit of a heads up, a little detail insight into what I'm working on. So if y'all want to check out my Facebook page, you can go to Matthews Ballistics on Facebook and you should be able to easily find the pages there. Um, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this and we'll see you next time in the next video. Have a good night.